video, we're going to look at ways to approach learning Bach's Prelude in C major on Lever Harp. The Prelude, as its name suggests, goes before something else, in this case a fugue. And in fact, the Prelude is the first item in a whole set of 48 Preludes and Fugues, written by the German Baroque composer Johann Sebastian Bach. It wasn't written for Lever Harp, as you can imagine, but instead written for keyboard instruments of Bach's lifetime, like the harpsichord, the virginal or the clavichord. Bach wrote these preludes and fugues to test out a method of tuning in which all 12 major and minor keys could be used. He wasn't the only person to do this. Johann Christian Schickard did something similar for flute and violin with accompanying instruments or basso continuo when he wrote his L'Alphabet de la Musique in 1735. And since then, we have other 20th century examples, like the collection by Dmitry Shostakovich of his 24 Preludes and Fugues, or another set by the Irish composer Joseph Gruco. Bach wrote two books of them, one each in 1722 and 1742, covering every major and minor key twice, so we have 48. This workshop focuses in particular on the levering in this piece. Feel free to pause or stop the video at any stage so that you can work at a pace that's comfortable for you. For the sheet music, you can screenshot this image, download a watermarked score for free, or you can purchase the book it's in, which is called A Baroque Bouquet, The O'Farrell Collection, Volume 2, and that's available over on my website. There are a few reasons why this is a really great piece to use to learn levering, and one is that the tempo or speed is quite moderate. Now Bach doesn't give us a speed marking, but a guide for a suitable speed for this piece is to play it fast enough that we have enough movement for it to be interesting, but not so fast that we miss the lovely detail of the harmonies. Another reason it's great to use for levering is that if you notice, for every eight notes, the left hand plays only two out of those eight, giving you free time to change the levers. So here's bar 13. Now there are different types of lever notation around, but I find the clearest is the black diamond shaped note head without a stem. Now if you look at the very beginning of the piece in a harp edition, you'll see that two levers are preset. So your harp is set with levers in C major and the only ones that aren't in C major are this F sharp here and this A flat down here. Okay, so if you have those set before you start. You'll notice in this piece how you have the option to change the lever sometimes in the first half of the bar or in the second half since each pattern is repeated. I'd suggest doing it in the first half because it gives you leeway in case you forget in the first half you still have a, a sort of margin of error in the second half of the bar to, to put things right. So uh, have a look at bars 15 and 16. <laughs> Now there are three places in the piece where you have to change a lever right after playing that string. So for example in bar 11 this happens where you've just played the B natural and you're going to have to make it a B flat right after you've played it. So what you want to avoid is this. So that way you get this slide. So you want to avoid that by touching the string just before you change the lever. So instead we have... And that way you get a nice clean change of the semitone. Then that also happens in bar 13. And also at bar 21. And then finally it happens in bar 28 and this is a fairly quick one. So you'll just have had your E flat and your F sharp and you have to move this E flat to an E natural fairly quickly as you go from bar 28 to bar 29. Mm -hmm. 
There are four places in the piece where you have to change the lever quite quickly and one of these is bar 12. So our B flat will be there and right after we begin bar 12 we go quickly up to this C sharp lever here. Okay, that also happens then uh, in a few other places as well. Uh, for example bar 22 on the E flat, bar 28 for the F sharp and bar 32 on the B flat. So here's bar 32. There's no magic to changing levers quickly. It's just a matter of perseverance and getting used to it. But the music just gets so exciting when you do that you'll, you'll never look back. Playing a piece like this with lots of levering, it's a bit like learning two sets of information at the same time. So there are a few things you can do to help that. First, you can do all the lever changes in sequence without playing any of the notes. So you can do this in free tempo to start with while you get used to it. It's a really good idea to just change all the levers in sequence on their own. So for example, your starting <coughs> setup, as I mentioned there, is C major except for this F sharp and this A flat. So you have no levers for the first several bars. Your first lever change happens at bar 11, where you have B flat, next bar C sharp, then F natural, A flat, C natural, A natural, B natural, and you're home and dry to the end of the first page. Another thing is that's a really good idea to do is to sort out your practice starting points. So what I like to do is a boxed set of, uh, of note heads at the beginning of the system. But even if you just work it out for this piece, so have a look at bar 11, that would be a useful starting point because your levers in bar 11 are the very same as they are at the very beginning of the piece. And onwards from there, okay? And then another good place might be the top of the second page, just before we have this cadence in C major. And if you want to set up a starting point there, your levers are exactly the same as C major all the way through, except for this low A flat there. And that enables you to pick up here. And on from there, okay? And then another good uh, starting point might be at bar 24. So um, here, all set up for C major with two exceptions, the middle E flat and the low a flat okay and i set up my starting point so that if i have a lever change near the beginning of that bar i set it up so i still have to practice in that change and onwards from there one of the things i also like to do is just take a sheet of paper and just write out all the lever changes from memory sometimes I write the piece from memory but if you don't want to do all that, even just to write out the, the lever changes. So it's a great way of confirming it kind of in your mind. Now let's hear the whole piece played through so we can see how all those ideas fit together. So here's the Bach prelude number one in C major. Mm -hmm. 